So in continuing our discussion about, uh, about hydraulics, we've done one example uh, where we had 200 foot of inch and three quarter flowing 185 gallons a minute. We're gonna just kind of flow through a couple more examples and kind of talk about breaking these numbers down into manageable uh, components that we can use very, fairly quickly. So <clears throat> we know that when we're, when we're dealing with nozzle pressure, we're, look, we're generally looking at one of four numbers. It's either 50, 50 75, 80 or 100 PSI in most cases. And this helps to simplify our, our thought process when it comes to making the application for the nozzle pressure. And the reason that I say it's either 50, 75, 80, or 100 is that we know that smooth bores operate at either 50 or 80. And when we start talking about combination nozzles and getting into the various types of combination nozzles, we're really looking at one of two numbers. Most of the time, our, our pressure that we operate on our combination nozzles is either going to be 100 or 75. In some cases, some manufacturers have low pressure versions that also operate at 50. So it's a good idea that <clears throat> to understand that these are the four most common numbers. These are not the only numbers that you will ever utilize in, in the nozzle pressure area or nozzle pressure component of that equation. Let's take, for example, <clears throat> another engine. In this case, we're going to stretch 150 foot of inch and three quarter. <clears throat> we're going to put a, uh, a standard 100 pound automatic on the end of it. <clears throat> and I want to flow 150 gallons a minute. So when we start breaking this down, and asking ourselves, what, you know, what size is the hose? The hose is inch and three quarter. Once we know that the hose is inch and three quarter, that automatically tells us that our coefficient is going to be 15. Generally accepted coefficient. Now, I want to take a little second and talk a little bit about the coefficients. It's important for us to recognize and understand that these coefficients are the generally accepted term. In most cases, if you have hose that's been, that has been um, built or, or made within the last 10 years, the, likely, it, it, the, the likelihood is very high that your coefficient, your actual coefficient, is going to be lower than that. And when I say your actual coefficient, I mean the, the, you are going to find that what you produce on paper and what you get on the street are often going to be two different numbers. And most of the time, your number on paper will probably be higher <clears throat> in terms of friction loss than what you are actually generating on the street. So it's important to realize, the imp I can't not overstate the importance of understanding that it's important to test the numbers that we come up with when we're looking at <clears throat> and coming up with these numbers on paper. So when we go back to our, our example here, we know we're using an inch and three quarter hose line. We know we want to flow 150 gallons a minute. We know it's 150 foot long. We know what type of nozzle it is. Knowing what type of nozzle it is, we know that standard 100 pound automatic uh, nozzle, we need 100 pounds right here at the tip. In terms of nozzle pressure in order to make it function properly. <clears throat> so we've got the basic components. Now let's start putting, to putting together our equation. In this case, we have friction loss equals, we have uh, our coefficient is going to be 15. <clears throat> Q, Q equals GPM divided by 100 in this case. So we have 150 divided by 100. We end up with 1.5. We're going to square that. And then we're going to multiply that. We have 150 foot of hose. So 150 divided by 100 is 1.5 again. <coughs> so our friction loss ends up being 15 times 2.25 times 1.5. <coughs> well, 15 times 2.25 ends up being like 33 pounds and change. So when we start looking at, <coughs> again, we start looking at oddball numbers like 33, 31, what we really need to be doing is rounding those up to the nearest five or down to the nearest five if it's close. 
Typically, if it's, if it's less than two, I round it down. If it's more than two, I'll just round it up. So in this case, we're going to end up with 35. Multiply that times 1.5. <clears throat> so 17 and 35, we end up with 40, what, 47? 47 is our friction loss component. In this case, we're going to add it to 100, which is our nozzle pressure. We end up with 147 PSI. And in reality, we're going to pump that at 150. <coughs> so it's important to understand that on 150 foot of inch and three quarter, flowing 150 gallons a minute with an automatic nozzle, here we, we end up with a, a pump discharge pressure of 150 PSI. Now, one of the things that we're going to find as we continue to do this uh, example after example after example is <clears throat> that utilizing these same coefficients, our friction loss becomes consistent for the volume that's discharged over the varying hose lines. <clears throat> now, if, if you'd like me to put that into English, what I'm saying is, for in this case, for inch and three-quarter hose, we know, we just did an example at 150 gallons a minute, we know that that's going to end up generating, in this case, 35 PSI of friction loss. At 150 gallons a minute through inch and three-quarters, you're always going to come up with 35 pounds because you're always utilizing the same coefficient. The only thing that changes is your length. So that's 35 PSI per 100 feet. <clears throat> At 185 gallons a minute, we end up with about 45 PSI per 100 feet. And with at 200 gallons a minute, we end up at about 60 PSI per 100 feet utilizing the same equation CQ squared plus times L. <clears throat> so this be these become constants and a quick way for us to do friction loss on the street. And here's, here's an example I'll just, we'll just whip off the top of my head. 300 feet of inch and three quarter <clears throat> with a smooth bore on the end of it flowing 200 gallons a minute. All right, what's my friction loss? I know my flow is 200 gallons per minute. I'm going to utilize 60 PSI per 100. 60 times 3, I got 180, 180 pounds of friction loss. Plus my nozzle pressure, which is 50. My total pump discharge pressure is 230 PSI. So, <clears throat> What I'm saying is that utilizing these quick reference numbers like this, and if you do enough of these equations and start to break these down a little bit, you can identify these constants based on each size hose. Why would we want to do that? Well, most departments don't, don't really use five or six different sizes of hose. Most of us are using one size of a, a, small, a small attack line, a two and a half, and generally some type of a supply. If you are a department that obviously that utilizes inch and a half, inch and three quarter, and two inch, then this process becomes much more complicated in terms of now we need to know and understand that we're going to have to <clears throat> potentially memorize several more values. And, and what I mean by that is if you start to do this for two inch, what you end up with, you'll come up with a number at, you know, 150 gallons a minute through two inch. 185 gallons through 2 inch, 200 gallons, and then 225 gallons. But what I'm saying is you're going to end up developing these constants based off of volume and what that, this is per 100 feet. So that gives us the ability to do a real quick down and dirty friction loss, <clears throat> excuse me, friction loss math calculation on the fire ground if we have to. One of the questions that has been raised recently is that, you know, I, I, and this is a question that I get fairly often, is where does that needed fire flow number come from? 
And, and it comes from a couple of places. <clears throat> when we start looking at our pump discharge equation, At, in its most basic form, on flat level ground with no other appliances, this is going to end up being our equation. You know, one of the questions that we have, that we're asking is, how much water do we need to flow or how much water do we want to flow? And th where that, um, the thought process of where that comes from, that can come from a lot of places. Um, you know, that comes from doing a, a fire flow calculation at its most complicated on, for a building that you roll up to, and at its, at its simplest, that comes from a direct, a departmental directive that says, our initial attack line or our, our first two attack lines, we're going to flow 150 gallons a minute at a minimum. Or even to make it even more simple than that, if we're pulling inch and three quarter hose, we're going to flow a minimum of 150 or 185 gallons a minute out of these attack lines. Our, and, and, and we're setting a, determ a, a determined amount of flow based off of the hose size that is manageable for our staffing level what, as well as the, the staffing that we can potentially get to that fire scene in order to aid in that in whatever's going on. So <clears throat> when we start breaking that down and looking at, um, I, I'll say, I'll use the NFF or for necessary fire flow or needed fire flow, you know, without getting too crazy with it, it usually is some type of a directive. And that's where I'm pulling these numbers. So let's say, for instance, uh, we'll just use the Columbus Fire Department. Columbus Fire Department says if we're going to pull inch and three quarter, we should be flowing at, at least 150 GPM out of that line. So whatever our line configuration is, however long it is, we want to flow. <clears throat> our, our flow should be at least 150 gallons a minute out of inch and three quarter hose. So when, we're start, when we start to do our math and we start to look at how long those lines can be, whether they're pre-connected or whether we're utilizing some type of an apartment stretch, this, is, this gives us a basis for, our, for where we begin. And that says 150 GPM is our minimum flow requirement for inch and three quarter hose. So when we start talking about hydraulics, hydraulics is, a, is one of those components to the fire ground or, or to this field of study that can get really complicated really quickly, but it doesn't have to. It can be as simple as remembering 33, 45, 60 as it pertains to inch and three quarter hose. If you're a department that utilizes inch and three quarter hose as an attack line, my guess is that your, your chances are you're going to have one of those three flows coming out the end of that line. And you're going to set it up to utilize that flow at its best. So having a good idea of what 150 gallons a minute generates as far as friction loss, 185 gallons a minute and, and 200 gallons a minute, gives us that basis for 33, 45, 60 and pulling up. And when we have that scenario where we do and some type of an oddball scenario where we set up 250 foot of inch and three quarter hose and put a smoothbore nozzle on the end of it and, and flow 150 gallons a minute, we know that two and a half times 33, we end up with somewhere around 80 PSI of friction loss and then add a, add a, a, a smoothbore nozzle to the end of it, 50 pounds, 50 and 80, 130, we're good to go. And so my point in utilizing that example is friction loss, friction loss calculations, hydraulic theory can get really complicated really quickly, but it doesn't have to. Um, but it, having a basic understanding of how to utilize that calculation is part of what makes us a functional, flexible, and disciplined engine company.